So you may not be aware, but the Nintendo eShop for the 3DS is actually closing very soon, with card payments stopping on the 23rd of May, and then later in the year, on August 29th, eShop vouchers will also stop working on the shop. So I thought I would come here today and show you all 10 amazing games for the 3DS eShop that you can buy right now before it's too late. Let's get started. So the first game on the list is a game called Go Go Coca Polo 3D, and this is actually a follow-up to a DSiWare game that came out a few years earlier. It's a really fun game of cat and mouse. The game plays like a really frantic version of the original Pac-Man, where you're running around these mazes, but the thing that makes this game really unique is the way that you actually attack the enemies, and the way you actually clear them out of the stages. So you run into an enemy and you have to press the A button to scratch them, and then you have to dart around the stage as fast as possible, try and not to be caught by them and you have to lure them into this plant that's in the middle of the stage. You need to jump over this plant and then the enemies will run into it and they'll get eaten by it and then you get a chance at a roulette wheel and then you press one of the symbols on the bottom screen with your finger and you may or may not get a bonus and you have to do that over and over again throughout the level in order to try and clear out all of the enemies. It's such a fun and unique concept and I've not really seen it done anywhere else, at least not as good as this and it plays really well on the 3DS. So if you enjoy fast paced action puzzle games games like Pac-Man but you want something a little bit more modern and a bit more engaging then Go Go Coca Polo is definitely a fantastic game to check out and it's actually on sale as well so go and check it out after this video and download such a unique and fun game for the system. The second game is actually three games, so I'm kind of cheating here, but I had to bring up all three. They're all very similar. This is the Dark Witch series, and I actually brought this up many years ago when I did an eShop Hidden Gems episode. They basically play like the original Mega Man games. They're 2D action platformers with a few really unique mechanics and some really nice anime-styled graphics too. The unique mechanic in particular is really cool. So basically, when you kill a specific enemy, it drops a power orb, and that orb fills up a power-up meter at the bottom of the screen, and if you set it to manual, you can actually choose when to power up and which kind of power-up you want. Kind of like in Gradius or Parodius, where you have to build this meter up and the better power-ups come later on, so you can do things like speed up, you can get things like wings, which let you float for a certain distance, and you can also, of course, get a power-up for your main weapon. And just like Mega Man, once you've finished the introduction stage, then the game opens up and you can choose any one of the levels to go and fight and take on the boss at the end of that stage too. All three games are really fun, they're all very similar, and they're all on sale as well. So definitely go and check out all three of the Legend of Dark Witch series games while you still can. And speaking of Mega Man, the next game is called Mighty Gunvolt, and this was kind of a spin-off of the Mighty Number no. 9 game, which of course didn't turn out very well. But this 3DS game, which goes back to the 8-bit style of the original Mega Man games, is actually a really fun throwback to those 8-bit games. It's not quite on the same level as Mega Man 9 and 10, for example, but taken on its own, it is a really good game, and it is, honestly, in my opinion, what Mighty No. 9 should have been like. And you can also play as Gunvolt from the Gunvolt games, as well as Beck from Mighty No. 9, and, of course, they each have their own different characteristics and style of play. It's quite a short game, and it's also fairly easy, at least compared to the original Mega Man series, but on its own it is a really nice little diversion, and I just love Inti Creates as a developer, and I think they are easily one of the best developers out there who know how to make really good old school 2D action games, and Mighty Gun Vault, and the sequel to this spin-off as well, Mighty Gun Vault Burst, is also worth checking out too. So if you want a really good Mega Man game for the 3DS that isn't Mega Man and is a little bit more underground, not quite as good but still a really interesting concept for a game, then definitely check out Mighty Gun Vault. The next one is a hack and slash adventure set in feudal Japan. It's called Sadame, I think it's pronounced like that anyway. And it's quite a slow paced game, but if you enjoy those sort of level grinding hack and slash adventure games, this is a really good one. It has really nice graphics, really nice 2D pixel art graphics, and a really deep and engaging gameplay system and atmosphere too. It is very deep considering it's just a download only game. And I really did enjoy my time with this one. It's a shame that because I had to re-download all the games I've 
lost all my progress. So you can only see right at the start of the game. But if this seems like something you'd be interested in, definitely go and check out Sadame. Now next is a 2D Metroidvania. This one's called Zeno Drifter, and I actually downloaded this one only recently, and I found out just after I got it that it's also available on the Switch. But when I decided to transfer the games over to my new 3DS instead of my 2DS XL, I definitely made the right decision by getting the 3DS one because the actual 3D effect in this game is really, really cool. I love it when 2D pixel art games have those layered backgrounds, and this one does it perfectly. And the game itself also seems like a really cool, very, very challenging, original style 2D action platformer with Metroidvania gameplay as well. There's a lot of really difficult boss fights in this game, but it is the kind of game that makes it feel really rewarding once you manage to get past a certain point. Overall, it's just a really well-polished Metroidvania, and I definitely recommend it if you're into the genre. Now, next is a game that I actually saw shown off at Games Done Quick a few years ago. This is another platformer, but a very different kind of platformer. This one was kind of made for speedrunning, and it may look extremely simple at first glance, but there is a lot of hidden complexity to this game. It's called Runny Egg, and at first glance you might think it's kind of shovelware, but give it a go and you'll find a really rewarding, very very fast paced, and also extremely challenging action platformer. There's some really cool mechanics in this game that I've not really seen anywhere else. So if you start running down a hill, eventually the egg will begin to roll, and then you'll build up momentum, and as long as you keep jumping over the pits and don't get hit, you can keep that momentum up throughout the rest of the game. There's also a really interesting mechanic where if you fall from a certain height, you have to press the X button before you land else the egg cracks. I just thought it was a really cool little thing, Liz. So I definitely recommend it if you like your platforming games. And it does have a few different difficulty options as well. So if it looks too difficult for you, don't worry, I was playing it on hard mode because I do like a challenge in my platformers. And now a game by the incredible developer Shinen. This one is Jet Rocket 2. And this is one of the best 3D platformers on the system. It kind of plays like a slightly slower paced Super Mario 3D land. And that is not a bad thing in any means. It also has some of the best graphics on the entire system in my opinion. Shinen are just coding geniuses and it really shows in this game. It's such a fun game as well. It's quite simple, but there are a few unique mechanics, kind of like runny eggs. So, so as the name suggests, you get a jetpack which you can use a few specific spots and only for a certain period of time. So you can't really cheat your way through the level, but there are a few instances where you need to collect the power up in order to use the jetpack. And there's also a special attack where you can roll into a ball and hit the enemies and kind of use it as a double jump as well. It's a really cool game and I definitely recommend it if you want some more 3D platformers for the 3DS. Now, Steel Empire next, and this one is a horizontal scrolling shooter, and I actually brought this one up in my review of Andro Dunos 2 for the 3DS, so if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that video. But Steel Empire, I would say, is the better game. This is actually an updated version of one of my favourite games on the Sega Mega Drive. It's actually one of my favourite shoot 'em ups of all time, and to see it ported to the 3DS with the 3D graphics and the amazing updates to the 2D pixel art, it's just such a good game. I also love the fact that you can shoot forward and backwards as well, and I love the aesthetic too. It has a kind of Studio Ghibli feel to it. And if you've not played it before and you like your shoot 'em ups this is definitely the best shoot 'em up on the system, hands down. Two more games now, one of them I've mentioned before, and one of them I have never mentioned on this channel. So let's begin with the one that I've mentioned before, and I showed this one off in my Umihara Kawase retrospective. Of course, this is Sayonara Umihara Kawase. One of the best games in the entire series, it's an incredibly difficult but rewarding game with an incredibly fun gameplay mechanic where you have to use the grapple hook to swing around these very difficult little platforming challenge stages. Go and check out my video on the entire series because it is one of my favourite game series ever and I've actually got all of the games now and the 3DS game is really good. Although I would say if you do have the choice, try and get it on the PlayStation Vita instead because that one runs at a higher frame rate. But if you want the 3D effect and if you want to be able to take Umihara Kawase around with you, without having to track down the incredibly expensive DS game from Japan, then this one is one that you can get on the UK eShop, and I highly recommend it. And the final game here, and another really interesting one, and the only game in this list actually which makes heavy use of the touchscreen, this is Noitu Love Devolution. And I actually played the original Noitu Love back in college on my Windows Vista PC at the time. It was actually a freeware game that I think came with a PC Gamer magazine. So when the sequel came out on the 3DS, I got it day one and I was not disappointed. Basically, if you like really fast paced run and gun action platformers, kind of like Gunstar Heroes or Metal Slug, 
Mix that with kind of hack and slash gameplay with the touchscreen, and that is kind of what you've got with this game. The graphics are just incredible, some of my favourite pixel art ever. In fact, the developer, Joachim Sandberg, actually went on to make Iconoclasts, which was one of my favourite games on the Switch a few years ago. So if you've played Iconoclasts and you want to know what games he made before it, definitely check out Noitu Love Devolution. And you can also get this one on the Wii U as well. And I've actually got both versions, and if you have the Wii U game, you can get the 3DS game cheaper too. And if you want something really bombastic and a really cool action game for the system, then it's definitely recommended. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of my list. Let me know if you think I missed any games or if you think there's any that I should pick up. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to join all of the amazing people going across the bottom of the screen right now, go ahead and check out Patreon and subscribe because very soon I will also be doing another 10 games for the DS eyewear shop, which is also closing at the same time. So stay tuned for that. Of course, subscribe and I'll see you all for the next episode very soon. Goodbye.